This is an 86-year-old gentleman with a history of ischemic heart disease with uh, non-STEMI completed through anti-plated therapy at the moment. He was found to have a raised ALP and white cell count. MRCP in September noted prominent CBD with a possible filling defect in distal portion. First ERCP was done in September, failed CBD cannulation, and contrast injection showed dilated CBD with possible impacted stone in distal portion. Pre-cut was not done because patient was at was on Plavix at the time. Second ERCP was repeated in November after the completion of Plavix. It's a difficult cannulation and contrast injection showed an 8 mm filling defect in distal CBD. Pre-cut was performed but still unable to achieve CBD cannulation. This is the MRCP theme of this patient and on the right side is the ERCP theme showing the distal CBD stone. Plan for EUS plus or minus ERCP today. So um, let's look at it EUS wise. I'm a little confused with the uh, diagnosis here because patient doesn't have jaundice and we have a dilated CBD and a definite uh, ERCP telling us that there was a stone in September. So let us first look what we are dealing with. Uh, so here I am, if you can see, this is the liver. And you can see the portal vein and the bile duct. Freeze, please. Let us measure the bile duct. So you see all the three things, the portal vein, the bile duct, and the hepatic artery here. And now the CBD is dilated. It is 13.5 millimeters. Patient has only elevated alkaline phosphatase. There is no jaundice. Let us trace it down towards the pancreas. So I'm tracing this from the stomach. You can see now this is the SMB. Now you see the PD is coming from above. Stop. So this is the... Um, SMB here, this is the pancreatic duct coming down from the neck and this is the bottom common bile duct entering the pancreas. So let us trace it and see what's happening. So we trace, now you see the head of the pancreas, the bile duct entering the behind the pancreas, the pancreatic duct going linear. So you have a dilated bile duct coming all the way till the papilla. See, now the PD also is dilated. Freeze. No, no, freeze. freeze. Ah. So, if you see the PD here in the head, this is 5.5. So, we are dealing with a uh, dilatation of both CBD and PD. And this is the duodenum. See here, freeze. So, um, the round thing that you are seeing here, this is the duodenum. And this is the head of the pancreas. We don't see any mass in the head of the pancreas. We haven't seen any stone anywhere. So um, all we have seen so far from the stomach is dilated CBD and PD. So I'll quickly go to the duodenum and see what's happening. So we are in the duodenum now. You see the bile duct. Turning clockwise, turning. Now you see the PD freeze. So here you see the uh, bile duct. This is the common bile duct. This is the pancreatic duct. Both of them are converging together. And this is the duodenum. So let's trace it towards the end and see. Here they join for at the papilla. So this is the wall, the ordinal wall, and we are in the duodenum. So I really don't see anything here. This is the duodenum. So let's quickly try from the D2 also. So far. All we are seeing are dilated systems and nothing else. So uh, I'll go to the D2. And so 
maybe we are dealing with a ampullary pathology a small ampullary pathology uh, so let's try to okay little difficult to go into the duodenum yeah okay i'm in the duodenum now we go to d2 now this is the papillary area see this this is the papillary area on endoscopy if you see i don't see anything great but we should do a duodenoscopy a eus scope will not show you so well so we reduce the loop and reduce the echo endoscope like the ERCP. Now, we are seeing the aorta. We withdraw, slow withdrawal, slow withdrawal, clockwise, anti-clockwise movement, slow withdrawal and now we should see the ducts. So, you see the pancreatic duct. So, this is the pancreatic duct entering the papillary area. Uh, we measure it here again. Yeah. So, so it is dilated. Pancreatic duct is six millimeters. So both the ducts are dilated, and this is the CBD. Uh, magnify, please. Um, uh, magnify a bit. Now you see this is the bile duct, and this is the pancreatic duct. This is the bile duct. This is the pancreatic duct. Now is there something in the terminal area? Let's fill some water and see the papillary area. So, it is a, it's a very interesting case. Um, we have a diagnostic dilemma before we do anything because um, patient is not jaundiced and I do not want to do something without you know a proper uh, indication. So, we are filling water in the duodenum now. So, this is the papillary area. I, I really, Raymond, you see anything? I am not really seeing any mass here. So, is it a papillary stenosis? <laughs> I am not seeing a mass here. Right. See here? Yes. This is a nicely seen papillary area. Yes. Um, there is no mass here. So, yes. probably papillary stenosis? Possible. Here. She must be passing stones or some sludge or something. Right. She's elderly lady. Yes. And see this? Yes. So and there was like uh, on the uh, cholangiogram we got from the superficial cannulation. Yeah. We saw that the ducts are exactly like this. The yeah, PD yeah. is closer to the common channel with a uh, more prominent mm. CBD uh, next to it. So, so let us see if we can uh, yeah. clarify the papilla a little bit better. Yes. Uh, so, this is the second part of the day. Yes. I think we are. One thing I can definitely tell you is uh, there is no big mass or anything exactly, here. Yes. There is something mucosal. We should do a. So, this is, a, this is the papilla. Yes. See yes. here. This is the both the ducts are entering here. Yes. Uh, no. Okay. I am pretty convinced that yeah. there is no mass and there is no stone. Right. Stop right. the water. Okay. I don't think we should do any therapy here. Maybe we should do a side wing scopy just to check the papilla. Yes. Uh, which we can do uh, yes. later on. Sure. No hurry of doing it. Sure. So, um, any any comments from the audience or? Well, uh, I think you should do a RCP and uh, look at the low end with the, uh, uh, to see whether. I think they said they had difficulty cannulating last time. Would you they, do? Yeah, could. I would not like to do an ERCP in a patient with a normal bilirubin and no indication on EUS that there is anything. I would do a side wing scopy to look at the papilla. That would be my approach. Okay. Because really there is nothing to suggest any abnormality other than dilated ducts. So if there is a papillary stenosis, yes. If patient has pain, suggestive of papillary stenosis causing pain, then yes, mm. she will need a sphincterotomy. Mm. Uh, but if there is no pain, Probably I will just observe after doing a side wing scopy. 
Um, I think, Dr. Deere, I think we were hoping that you would uh, show us some an EUS guided rendezvous procedure. <laughs> um, I would have loved to do that. So, so although, you, although you can't uh, demonstrate it to us, um, perhaps you can, can you share with us, so sometimes after puncturing um, the CBD from the duodenum, the wire okay. can go up okay. to the hilum. So how do you get it to go down into okay. the papilla? Sh show us the, uh, so I'll show you the positions, please. So uh, as I showed you on EUS, there are multiple areas uh, for doing, you, uh, if we start from the liver, go back again, this is the liver, so you see here, you can puncture, then the adva big advantage is, you puncture either from the liver, so first what I do is, I look at the liver, look whether there are any dilated intrahepatic biliary radicals, so this is the segment 3 position here and this if you come closer here this will be the segment 2 position so you look for dilated biliary radicals if you don't find any dilated biliary radicals you still have a choice I think they are shifting the patient position so this is the bile duct we trace the bile duct down here this is behind the pancreas now you can see here so obviously you will not puncture here, a lot of pancreas is here. So you go to the duodenal bulb. Now I am in the duodenal bulb, you see here, you see the bile duct right underneath. I will freeze here, you see the bile duct here. So but do not puncture straight away, look at your fluoroscopy. So, fluoro please, show me the scope tip, yeah, so now if you see the scope position is such that if I put a needle it will look towards the hilum. So this is a good position for a cholidoco diodnostomy but not a good position for a rendezvous. So I need to get a better position. So I push my scope still further, here, fluoro, which one, this one, now see, you see the change in position, can yes. you see the change in my fluoro position, the scope position? Ah, uh, Yes we can, yes. So now the scope is looking towards the papilla and this is a good position. Can you give me a needle? I will not puncture, I will just show the needle direction. Any needle will do, just to show, just to show. So it is extremely important that you position your scope well before you puncture. So if you puncture with your scope looking towards the hilum, um, you will really need an expert like Shehzad to manipulate the wire. So do not do that. Try to find a good position where your needle is looking directly towards the papilla. Then it becomes relatively easy. So and then I will show you one thing. See here, this is the duodenum. Can you see this? Yes, we can, yes. And there is another fold of duodenum here. Can you see? Ah, uh, yes. So now if I puncture, I am going to do a double puncture. So this is wrong. So always see that you have a proper duodenal wall and bile duct and do not have this another fold of duodenum next to it. So this is this will be a double puncture going through the duodenum two times. So I have to position again, I have to see what is happening here and get a good position before I, so small subtle things uh, will improve your success rate uh, tremendously. So I am trying to get a good position where I do not have a duodenal fold, I come out, go back again. So there is some deformity, okay, now I think it will be better. 
So, now I Doppler and so there is no bile duct here, we withdraw. Here is the bile duct. See this? Now fluoro. Achha, sorry, I forget. <laughs> now you see it's a beautiful scope position for rendezvous. You will take two minutes, that's all, to pass the wire because it's a it's looking towards the papilla. So the bile duct should be like this. I will not puncture, I'll just show you the direction of the needle. And then you need somebody to expertly negotiate the wire. So, is the needle out? Fluoro? Now, see, this is my needle position. Here. This is a much better position. If I, I will further change it so that you start looking down. Okay? So, this is one tip. The other tip is you should have nice assistants to help you, like I have wonderful assistants right now with me. And the third thing is, once the wire is out of the papilla, to grab it and pull it back into the scope, the wire sometimes slips. So, do not worry. It is not a major problem. You will always manage it, almost always, without any problem. Uh, I try to cannulate for about 5 minutes by the side of the wire. And that succeeds in about 65 to 70 percent of cases. If it does not succeed, then I do the classical rendezvous. Are you seeing the gallbladder? Uh, yes, we can, yes. Can you see the sludge within the gallbladder? You have a sort of a starry sky appearance? Y uh, y yeah, not exactly that, but yes. So, there is sludge. So, I think this patient has papillary stenosis and if she has symptoms, she will benefit by a sphincterotomy. All right, so, so thank hopefully, there will be another case tomorrow and then I can show you some more things. Absolutely. So, thank you very much again, Dr. Deer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>